First project, we are going to upcycle this glass jar. If you've been following along, you know that I never throw any of my glass jars. I like to upcycle them because there's so many ways that you can turn them into beautiful home decor. I have a full tutorial on how to paint glass so it doesn't chip or peel. I'll put that link down below in the description and you can check it out because it's guaranteed to work 100%. I've taken the lid off the glass jar, sprayed it with some white spray paint, and now I've got some floral foam. I picked it up at the dollar store. You can always find it in the craft section. I'm putting my lid on top of the floral foam and I'm just gonna cut around it so I can get a piece the same size as the lid. Just carving it down a little bit so it fits on top of that lid really well. I'm just using my hot glue from my hot glue gun and I'm going to glue that floral foam on top of that lid. When I'm out at the thrift store or at yard sales and I see any bits of faux flowers or dried flowers, I always pick them up, even if they're off season, cause I'll tuck them away because I've saved these throughout the year and I had all kinds of fall theme floral that I could add to this top. I just kind of filled it up until I thought it looked pretty and pushed all of those picks into the floral foam. I wanna put a graphic on the front of that glass jar. So I made a homemade napkin. This is a really easy process to do. I have a full tutorial. I'll put that link down below in the description on how you can make your own custom napkins. I printed this off on my printer with one ply of a napkin. And now we're going to do the water method to transfer it onto this glass jar. I love this decoupaging method. It works fantastic and it really eliminates any bubbles and wrinkles. I'm just cutting it off that piece of computer paper and there's our one ply of our custom napkin. I like to make the edges ragged. So I take a stiff paintbrush and dip it in a little bit of water and then just make that edge ragged all the way around that napkin. So when you do decoupage it onto your project, it just blends in a lot better. And I did this method on a page protector that I picked up at the dollar store. Now you wanna make sure that it's facing down on that page protector, and then we're going to just wet it and make sure there's no wrinkles in it. Just kind of use your fingers or you can use a little bit of a, a sponge and just, just dampen that whole graphic. And then we're going to put some Mod Podge on the glass jar. And you don't need very much, just enough to cover the area where the napkin is going to sit on the glass jar. Then we're gonna pick up that page protector and lay it right where we want it. The nice thing about this method is if it's not exactly where you want it, you can pick it up and you can kind of move it around a little bit. Whereas if you were just decoupaging on, once you put it on, it is stuck. I've got it exactly where I want it and I'm gonna start from the middle and just press out any bubbles or any wrinkles, just making sure that it's stuck really well onto that glass jar. And then we're gonna peel away that page protector, making sure the napkin is stuck really well and you have put a graphic onto your glass jar or any project that easy. No bubbles, no wrinkles, works fantastic. We're gonna let it dry completely. I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer, add a really nice ribbon around the neck of it, and then we're going to screw on that top that we put the florals in, and we've created a beautiful piece of fall home decor from a glass jar from the recycling bin. You can also fill this up with goodies and give it as a gift. I just love the way that this one turned out. We are going to be using some air dry clay. This is air dry clay that I picked up at our Dollarama and I find that it works really well. I'm just rolling it out until it's about a quarter of an inch thick and then I'm going to cover a glass jar that I've primed with some spray paint and we're going to wrap it around and then just mold it all over that entire jar. And I had to add a little bit of clay here and there to get it completely covered. And it doesn't have to be smooth. We actually don't want to have it smooth. I've got it completely covered over that glass jar. I set it aside, let it dry overnight. Now don't panic because when this dries, this cracks, but that's what we want. So now we've got some toilet paper and I'm just going to decoupage that toilet paper onto that jar over top of those cracks. That's gonna reinforce it so it'll all stay together really well. You can use paper towel, toilet paper, or even some tissue paper. I've printed this graphic off on my laser jet printer and I'm just gonna use my ruler and just rip around the edges. I find using this type of a ruler, it gives kind of a ragged edge and that's what I'm looking for for this graphic little bit of instant coffee and water, and I'm just dabbing it all over that paper so we can give it an antique old feel. 
Now while we're waiting for that coffee stain label to dry, I'm just gonna use that same sponge with the coffee solution and just sponge it all over top of that toilet paper that we decoupaged on that jar. It's going to give it a really old antique feel and it's gonna seep into all of those cracks and crevices. My coffee stained label is all dry and I have some of this dye ink and I'm just gonna rub it around that ragged edge of the paper just to give it a little bit of more of an aged look. And then we're gonna decoupage it right on top of that jar. Just gonna put a light amount over that whole label and then center it right where we want it on the jar. And we've taken a glass jar from the recycling bin and upcycled it into a really spooky piece of Halloween decor. A little tip when you're working with a jar and it's rolling around, grab your lint roller and it'll stick to it and keep it in place while you're working with it on the table. Once I have everything in place, I'm just taking the Mod Podge and putting a light coat over the label and the rest of the jar. I went out to my garden and I looked for some old weeds and some dead flowers to fill it up with. And how easy was this to create a really spooky piece of Halloween decor for your home? As we head into the cozy fall and Christmas season, I wanted to share something exciting with you. I have started at an amazing Our Upcycled Life graphic club on Patreon. When you join every Friday night, you're gonna receive all of the new graphics listed in my Etsy store that I have designed that week in your email. And by the end of the month, you're gonna be guaranteed 20 graphics, usually more because I'm always uploading new ones. My Etsy store is packed with fantastic graphics, proven bestsellers, and a wide variety to choose from, and it's a perfect opportunity for us to craft affordably. Plus, as a special bonus, you're gonna get a fantastic 70% off discount code on my graphics already listed in my Etsy store, so you can grab your favorite graphics at an affordable price, and whether you're a crafter or a reseller, this graphic club is game changer with low expenses, you can increase your profits when you're selling your items. If you're interested, click the link below in the description to sign up and start receiving your graphics right away. Let's create together and have some crafting fun. Next project, we're gonna upcycle this olive oil container. The first thing that we need to do is take this spout off and then I'm going to turn it upside down and spray it really well with some black spray paint. And before I sprayed it with the spray paint, I made sure I washed it really, really well and I wiped it down with an alcohol wipe because we don't want any oil left on the jug. Now I'm painting it, once that black spray paint has dried, I'm painting it with my orange homemade chalk paint. I also have a full tutorial on how to make colored homemade chalk paint. I'll put a link down below in the description and you can check that out. Now we're gonna add a graphic to the front of that olive oil container. Using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method, I printed this off on my laser jet printer and I am just going to push it right down exactly where I want it, get out any bubbles and wrinkles, and then we're gonna let it sit for 24 hours. This is the next day, I've dampened it with some water, rubbed off all the paper, sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer, and now we're gonna put a pumpkin stem on the top. This is just an old spindle that I had laying around, added some faux flowers and some twine, and that is an amazing upcycle from something right out of the recycling bin. Next up cycle, we are doing a peanut container that I pulled out of the recycling bin. I'm spraying it with some spray paint that's meant for plastic. Make sure you're using that or it'll peel and chip off. Once that's completely dry, I can then put on my chalk paint on top of it once we have that first layer of spray paint. Gonna paint the whole container and then set it aside and let it dry. I'm going to put my homemade napkins on this container. I've taken one ply of a napkin, attached it to a piece of computer paper. I'm gonna send it through my printer, print on it. We have a custom made napkin. I'm gonna cut that napkin off of that piece of computer paper and then I'm gonna put it on a page protector. You want to lay it down, facing down on that page protector and then I like to make the edges ragged. It just makes it blend into your project better. Just using a little bit of water and a stiff paintbrush and removing some of that napkin. We're gonna sprinkle on a little bit more water, making sure there's no wrinkles or no bubbles, get it laying nice and flat, and then take off any extra water 
and we're going to put Mod Podge on the front of that peanut container once the paint's completely dried. Lay that napkin right where you want it. And the nice thing about this technique, if it's not exactly where you want it, you can pick it up and kind of move it around, opposed to just decoupaging it right on. And we now have our custom made napkin applied onto that plastic container. You can just take your fingers and just smooth it out a little bit if you need to. Now I wanna put a knob on the top of the lid just to make it look a little bit more high end. Gonna drill a hole through the middle of that lid and then just attach the knob. I have a little collection of knobs just for this purpose itself and I can just root through it and pick out one that's suiting for the project. I had these wooden cutouts that I picked up at Dollarama for $2 and I'm going to add a few of them as embellishments to the front of this container. I think this is absolutely adorable and it's even better when it's free from the recycling bin. Save your wine bottles and take the labels all off, clean them up really well. And then we're going to paint these with my homemade chalk paint. I have a recipe for my homemade chalk paint. I'll put that link down below in the description. I also have a really good video on how to remove labels from glass bottles and I'll put that down below too. Now, once that chalk paint has dried, we're going to layer on the acrylic paint. Now you can't put acrylic paint as your base coat. You need to have chalk paint as your base coat or it will peel off. But once you have the chalk paint down, you can put acrylic paint on top of it. We're creating some candy corn wine bottles. I painted on some yellow and then I went on with the second coat and I used a sponge. It just gives a nice smooth finish. Set that aside and let them dry. I'm doing three wine bottles that are candy corn theme. Then we're going to go in with orange on the bottom. Same thing, I'm going to paint on that first coat, let it dry, and then sponge on the second coat, and it gives a really nice finish. And you can also edge around really easy. I'm going to make some hang tags for these bottles. These are just pieces of scrap MDF that I've painted with some chalk paint, and then I printed off my graphics on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text. And all these graphics are available in my Etsy store if you want to make some of these yourself. I'll put the link down below in the description. We're doing the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method, and I've put my Mod Podge mat on the graphics and going to center it right on those tags, set it aside and let them dry completely. I never throw out any scrap pieces of wood because basically anything can be turned into a little ornament or a little sign. I'm gonna add some twine to the neck of that bottle, tie it on nice and tight, and then we're going to add a little bit of a burlap bow. I think that will look nice. I and mean, I just picked up the burlap at the dollar store. If you accordion fold, that burlap it makes a really pretty bow just going back and forth and then back and forth and then just secure it with a piece of twine uh, and attach it to the bottle it's going to look really cute you can just tie that piece of jute at the back and then we're going to hot glue that right onto the bottle. Okay, my tags have sat for 24 hours. I just dampened it with a little bit of water, rubbing off the paper, and the graphics are left on the little tags. I'm going to drill a hole in the top, and then we're going to attach them to the wine bottles with a little bit of jute. I'm gonna upcycle this large Crown Royal bottle first. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna paint it with the homemade white chalk paint. I'm adding the white where the label was, and then I'm going to add black all around the outside of it. It doesn't have to be completely perfect because remember, we're turning this into spooky Halloween decor. When you're painting glass, you always wanna make sure that you're using chalk paint. Acrylic paint or latex paint will just chip right off or peel off. Now I've got my dirt out again and I'm rubbing it all over that dry black chalk paint. Gonna give it an aged antique vintage look to this bottle. So if you've got any glass jars or bottles in your recycling bin right now, you're gonna wanna go out and grab them and give this technique a try. Now I'm gonna go over that entire bottle, except the where the white label is with polyacrylic sealer. I'm using the matte polyacrylic and I'm just putting a light coat over top of that black chalk paint and that dirt. And we're gonna let it just get a little bit tacky and then we're gonna add some more dirt again. You wanna make sure you're putting some gloves on for this step because it gets really messy. 
And now we're gonna put on some more polyacrylic sealer. Now I've put some polyacrylic sealer in a separate dish because we don't wanna dip our paintbrush into that polyacrylic uh, container with dirt on it. And just kinda let it drip and run where it goes. And I think this looks fantastic. We're now ready to put the graphic on. Again, same process as that first project. Printed this off on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse it. It's available in my Etsy store. If you wanna grab this using my Mod Podge mat, I'm gonna center it right in the middle of that white label. Set it aside, we're gonna let it dry for 24 hours, and now I'm dampening it with a rag with a little bit of water, rubbing it off, and we have spooky graphics on that upcycled Crown Royal bottle. Now I'm gonna seal that up with some polyacrylic sealer, we're gonna add some twine to the top of the bottle. Now that it's all dry, and just tie it on there nice and tight. And then I'm gonna to go to my yard and I've got some really dried, crispy leaves on uh, branches that I'm just gonna stick in it. And I think it makes a perfect way to finish off this spooky Halloween bottle. So if you or your family members enjoy Crown Royal, or if you have friends that do, have them save those bottles because they turn into perfect Halloween decor. Now we have that smaller Crown Royal bottle. I'm going to paint it with some white homemade chalk paint, making sure to cover it really well, set it aside, let it dry, and then we're gonna put on a second coat also. Printed off this graphic, I've made sure I've sized it up for my project, reversed it, printed it on my laser jet printer. We're gonna cut it out and I want to, this is not gonna fit all across the bottle, so I'm gonna cut it in half and then put go on the top and away on the bottom and it's gonna fit onto this project better. One tip when you're doing this technique is to make sure that you're using the cheapest computer paper that you can find because the thicker the computer paper, the more you're gonna to have to rub off. So I just buy the cheapest paper I can find on Amazon and it works really great. Using my Mod Podge mat, putting a little bit on the paper, putting it exactly where I want it on my project, making sure there's no bubbles and wrinkles on it. And then we're gonna set it aside and let it dry for 24 hours. Dampened it with a little bit of water and we're rubbing off that paper. And we've got a really spooky graphic on this bottle. We're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. And now comes the fun part. I found this taper candle. I had it in my stash, but I'm sure I probably picked it up at the thrift store at some point. And if I just made it so it would fit into the neck of the bottle. Tying some twine onto the top, making sure it's nice and tight on there. Now I've got a red crayon. I'm taking the paper off. I've put the candle into that bottle. I've lit it. Now I'm taking that crayon and I'm gonna hold it over the flame. It's gonna melt that crayon and as it does, it's going to drip down and look like blood. And you can just kind of do it wherever you want. Let it melt and drip and flow over that candle onto the bottle. And it doesn't get much more spooky than that. This was fun, but make sure you're doing it somewhere where you've got a protected area because the wax, if you get it on your table, it's gonna create a mess and don't burn it unattended. I hope you've enjoyed today's spooky upcycles and I've inspired you to make something like this yourself. Thanks for watching, have a great day. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy either of these two. Take care.